Right guys, okay, paint chipping. Right, there's loads of different methods. Uh, my favorite method is nice and simple. Uh, you set a base for the paint chip. These are the pink areas here. This could look really bad. It could go either way, you have to go with it. Um, okay. So we're gonna take these and we're taking bulk gun metal and we're just gonna fill that in the inside of it. Okay, just like that. And you may go over bits and pieces but we're hoping to leave a little bit of the pink around the edges. So we're just filling in. It's a really slow boring process. And we'll just go down there like that. And we look on the top there. Go there. And, and in there as well. So you can see what we're doing. We're using the pink that we've mixed up, the not so much pink, but the red and the white. And we're just filling in. So we're leaving a little bit around the edges. I've got really shaky hands today. They have to teach me to have too many beers last night. Oh yeah, I think I'll show Crow in one of the, uh, the post-it games. It took me ages to work it out. Uh, but it was quite funny. Um, right. There we go. Right now, we're going to go onto the white as well. Now this is what I talked about. Don't worry about your line because this is going to break it up. And follow the natural, the natural lines as well. Which is always quite good. I need to get another pot of bulk of metal. I'm literally on my last dregs. Let's just move that out of the way. Let's follow that down there. Now, there's other ways of doing this. You can actually sponge it on. But, but sometimes you get too much paint on the sponge and it doesn't come out as well as you want. So we're about damaging that side up. You've got to be careful as well uh, not to uh, get your fingers on it because you'll just wipe all the paint off. So we just need to follow around there. And on there. You can see, if we just look closely just here, we've got an overlap of the uh, silver paint or the bulk gun metal. That's fine. That'll actually add to our advantage. Uh, because we want it to look chipped so it's always nice just to break that up there we go and what we're going to do is we're just going to keep going looking where we've put our paint already um, just follow that in there let's bring it to the to as much to the edge as we can just shift the paint around uh -huh. And we just follow that around there. And we'll bring this down into there. Let's move it over. Again there. Very boring, isn't it? But it needs to be done. Okay, so you can see what we're going with there. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to clean this up. Also, look at where uh, 
I've said this before, look where bolts and rivets are as well because it's worth just breaking them up a bit um, and going over them because they're the areas that they're going to tighten up all the time. So around here for the white, I'm not bothering putting a, uh, <clears throat> an undercoat chip for the, uh, for the white because when we come to add a bit of uh, um, silver to that over the top when we've washed it, that'll completely change the, that'll be basically our, our basis for the chipping, the bolt gun metal will, and then we'll just go over the top of that with uh, the silver. Um, just follow that, that bit there, we do that bit there, that's some little bits to it, let's just pull these guns open. I'm not following this bit here. Let the brush do the work. That's my favourite phrase, isn't it? Let the brush do the work. Okay. So that's pretty much there. Uh, let's actually bring that around there. Okay, so. <clears throat> As you can see, we've added our chipping effect into that. Um, let's just focus in this. There you go, can you see that? There you go. Okay, so that's the basis of our paint chipping. We're gonna spin that round to do exactly the same on the back pieces that we've started. So we'll follow that down. There, a little bit in there as well. If we follow that around, and we've just got to spin it upside down, and we do exactly the same as we did with the other bits. Let's just use that as our guideline. We just want to make sure that we keep a bit of the pink in there because that's the the undercoat. And we spin that around there as well. Now you can choose to use these methods. I'm not saying it's the best way of doing it. It's just what I feel comfortable with doing. And that's what I do. Other people have their own ways of doing it. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We're there nearly. All the paint chipping's done on the side. We leave that to dry, and we're going to focus on these little icons. These are the um, Inquisitor symbols on the books. And for that, <coughs> we're going back to our trusty blood red. Here we go. So we're taking that blood red, just take off as much as you can of the paint off the brush. Now, this is gonna be quite difficult. I was gonna save this till last, but we're just gonna get the red in there. Again, don't be afraid if it looks messy at the moment, because all this will clean up later. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm using the bread as a basis because um, as I said, the wash will hide a multiple of sins and we can just bring it out and clean it up. Uh, let's just take some of that paint off, that's too much. And I'm not, I'm not too worried if I go over the edges. I can clean that up later. I just need to get that in there. Oh, I'll tell you what, don't paint with a hangover. 
Okay. So we're doing well. We've just got these last few symbols to do. And then we can look at some other bits and pieces. Okay, it's going to look messy, but you have to bear with me. And we're just going to do this one here. Just take some of that paint off. Okay. Right, so there we go. So that's those symbols all painted up. Then we're going to come back to them after we've washed this whole thing. All right, well, let's leave that to dry and we'll start washing it. I'll speak to you later. Bye.